three, two, two one. one, go. אוקיי, <coughs> okay, אנחנו <coughs> בשידור חי בפייסבוק, בקהילה. פינטו, אני זז רגע שתציג את, את פול. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna introduce you in Hebrew and then we're gonna go to uh, English. So it's, it's your first time uh, mm-hmm. like in Israel or Hebrew talkers? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we are happy to be the first. Mi shalom akir, in kolam kol bruchim obayim ve'erev tov, ani mitragesh beramot. Anachnu marchim ayom et Paul C. Paul menahel et... יש לו, זה גם עסק וגם uh, ערוץ יוטיוב שנקרא WP Toots. אני מאמין שמי שמכיר אותי יודע שאני uh, מפרסם אותו ושם לינקים הרבה. Uh, יש לו מעל 72 אלף עוקבים, אם אני לא טועה, 7 מיליון. You have something like 7 מיליון views on YouTube? Uh, yeah, getting up for 8 מיליון now, getting closer oh. to 8 מיליון. Uh, קרוב ל-8 מיליון צפיות, יש לו ערוץ מאוד 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 מומלץ. Uh, מי שרוצה ללמוד על וורדפרס, בכל הרמות, יש לו המון טיפים, וגם עכשיו uh, הוא התחיל לעבוד גם עם uh, קרוקובלוק, אז uh, מאוד מומלץ. ועכשיו, כדי לכבד את האורח שלנו, אנחנו נעבור לאנגלית ונתחיל להציג אותו. So uh, now we uh, change our language to uh, English, and then uh, we will start. So good evening, Paul. Uh, I said in Hebrew that I'm very, very excited. I think that my first, uh, it's, it's, you, can, you can say that it's the, the first, uh, uh, first level that I went into uh, WordPress and Elementor and uh, before, even before Elementor, I remember that I used to uh, look for a lot of tutorials and videos once YouTube came out and Uh, I came across your channel and you have a big, uh, huge step in, in all the development that I did in, in my life in uh, WordPress and Elementor that I learned a lot from you. So thank you for this. Thank and, you. Uh, okay, so you want to introduce yourself uh, to the community? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Paul C. And it's probably easier for me to say the Paul C than it is my surname for a lot of people. But for anybody that wants to know, it's Paul Charlton. Um, I run a channel called WP Tuts. It focuses primarily on WordPress. For the last 18 months, we've taken a look at taking WordPress to another level by incorporating a lot more dynamic content using tools like Crocoblock, Advanced Custom Fields, those kinds of tools to help people develop a broader skill set, a more comprehensive skill set to create more comprehensive WordPress websites without having to deal with any kind of code. So that's basically who I am and fundamentally what I do. Okay, so I want to start to uh, congratulate you, uh, to congratulate you on uh, the collaboration, a partner that you did with the Cocoa Block. Um, can you share with us um, like how you came up with this and what's the future holds for uh, uh, in this area? Certainly. Uh, it came about, I think, from some pushing and prodding from the community that we're looking at the Crocoblock tutorials and the Crocoblock videos and realizing that they weren't necessarily answering the questions that a lot of new users really wanted to know, you know, how to utilize those different tools and plugins. And because I was kind of creating my own dedicated content on Crocoblock and, you know, primarily Jet Engine and Jet Smart Filters, they kind of liked what I did because I was sort of taking it from a much more comprehensive approach to you know, how to use and why you would use all the different tools and facilities to create something. And I think there was a lot of really great feedback, really lot, a lot of really positive feedback for the content I was creating, especially the sort of the deep dive videos where I take like a business directory and show you how to build all of that. And through conversations with you know, different members of Uh, Crocoblock, the community sort of requested that I created content for them and saying that they should contact me to create content, you know, specifically for them. I had a couple of conversations back and forth over probably the last eight to 10 months. And recently that's kind of come to something where they've seen they want to invest and push forward with more comprehensive content. And they've kind of contacted me and we've kind of come up with a collaboration where I'm going to be creating content on things like Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters, 
and take a look at doing some deep dive specifically for Crocker Block and using their tools, as well as continuing to create that content for myself off my own back for my own channel. So there's going to be probably a lot of content that will be on Crocker Block and also a lot of content on WP Tuts that will be separate and, and unique to WP Tuts. So that's okay. kind of how it came about. Nice. Um, what's your opinion about the new version? Because I saw a lot of things over there and it's like, go inside a candy store and just uh, enjoy more and more and more and more features that I saw. And also there's a lot of things that I learned in Jet Engine uh, from your channel that I'm, I'm trying to look. I saw the documentation that they have, they're good. But I say, oh, wait, I remember that Paul did something, a video on it. So I, I went to, to your channel, of course I found it. Uh, so what's your opinion about the new version? I think the last couple of versions they brought out have really started to answer those questions, those, those gaps in what Jet Engine was providing. I mean, it had some great tools, but it wasn't necessarily implemented in the easiest fashion. And something that I've definitely found when it comes to Crocoblock is that their first iteration of anything, whether it's like, you know, like 2.4, which has just been released, that starts off with a lot of really good ideas. But then over the next couple of weeks, they really hone in on what the community says, the feedback they get from you know, people that are using it, people like myself, people like yourself that use it, the community and so on. And then they, they fine tune it, they tweak it. And I think it, it builds momentum to become a much better product. And some of the things they brought out, like I say, with the maps in the last version in 2.3 and the ability to create, you know, different things that you can put together now visually as opposed to having to what you used to do is which code it. I really do like it. And 2.4 has definitely brought a lot of things that's made me, let's put it like this. It's made me put together a new video that says it's about time you take another look at Jet Engine if you've kind of bypassed it. So this is a, a bit of an exclusive me saying this, I haven't told anybody about this, but I think 2.4, 2.3 and 2.4 are becoming game changer versions okay. of Jet Engine. They really are opening up a lot more possibilities to make it a much more polished, well-rounded platform to build dynamic content on. Okay. What is the best feature that you loved in 2.4? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> Mainly because I've got so many things going around in my head at the moment, trying to figure out which one was which. Name me a couple and I'll tell you which I think was the best. What's your favorite? Um, you know what? The favorites that I have is uh, the numbers. Okay. They, 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 uh, they added in the last version. And, you know, I don't know if there is one mm -hmm. feature that I love because... Every time uh, I have a new website for a client, I'm looking for all the ways to go to use the jet engine because jet engine is <laughs> it's like it's like a, it's like a tree that you just grabbing and grabbing and grabbing or to yeah. be in the store uh, and you get and you get all the toys and you see more toys and you have fun because there's a lot of good things and good tools that to help you all the way. Definitely. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if there's a favorite one. All of them, all of them. I will, I will, I will, it's like kids. <laughs> actually, actually, we have discussed today, uh, Gabriel and I, uh, there's the um, short code generator in Jet Engine that is very, from the very big beginning, it's almost from the very beginning there. <laughs> and just after like, I don't know, two years of using it, Using the tool of Jet Engine, we we recognize the the power of the uh, shortcode. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah the, sometimes you have something under the <laughs> like uh, available, and you're, you're not always aware of of the capability that it gives. Absolutely, I, I would say, for me, probably the biggest thing that I thought was the best improvement, which is more two point three than two point four was the ability to create the dynamic re repeater regions now completely and utterly visually. You know, it's one of those things that they've had repeater regions in there for mm. probably the last year, maybe 18 months, maybe longer than that. But it was always one of those things that I felt was a little bit, you had to know how to code it right to make it work. And, and repeater regions are already quite complex. 
to integrate into a design and when you had to put on top of that code and I think it put a barrier in the way of ultimately what Crocker Block is about and jet you know sort of jet engines philosophy is about alongside Elemental which is drag and drop so I was really excited to see the fact that they changed that and brought that to be, you know, fully visual. Now everything about that is completely and utterly visual, which for me is is a is a, a game changer. I think that was definitely the one of the biggest things I liked about it. Um, other than that, hmm, conditional logic is a good thing in two point four. Yeah, that's really good. I just uh, used it uh, recently in in a project, and it's like. No way, it's possible. Okay, I need to, all fields to be conditional logic now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one of the nice things about those, I mean, I, I come very much from using advanced custom fields, you know, custom post type UI. That's been my real first love when it comes to creating dynamic content with Elemental Pro. But now, especially looking at 2.4, I've got the list in front of me now so I can, I can at least get my head back to where it was. Mm -hmm. That's kind of answered so many of the, what in ACF would be a third party plugin. Like you say, dynamic conditions was a plugin. You know, mm -hmm. dynamic visibility was a plugin. Data stores, as they called it, you know, which is basically like your wish lists and things, would be a plugin. So to have all of that inside Jet Engine now means that just Jet Engine alongside Jet Smart Filters, I've got two plugins that will do what would have taken me eight to 10 plugins when it comes to advanced custom fields. I would still use ACF because I think there are strengths in both sides of it. And I think when you're working with this kind of thing, building a strong understanding of how these tools work means you can go back and forth between them very quickly and easily. So yeah, I would say conditional logic is definitely one of the big things for me. Front end post deletion is useful because I think front end posting and front end management. I mean, one of the biggest tutorials I've done over the last couple of months was the front end dashboard for WordPress. You know, that I even had the developers from um, what's called Elemental Pro contact me to ask me, could they have a copy of the site so they could see how I built it? <laughs> so, I mean, that was quite a compliment. Either that or they're just going to steal my idea. I don't know. One or the other. <laughs> By the but way, I, mean, I loved it. Well, I, I got great feedback from that because I think it was doing something that nobody else was doing, which was taking these tools and finding a real world way of combining them to do something and answer, you know, a, a problem that not everybody wants to give access to the dashboard of WordPress. Not every client needs that side of things. And if all you are is a contributor to a site, having something like that is a fantastic way of working, which incidentally, the developer behind the plugin that's instrumental to that is also from Israel, who's a very good friend called Shabdi Kaplan. And a little bit of a shout out to Shabdi because I think he's doing a stellar job with the plugins. And he's a gentleman to work with. It's great to have someone that you can throw ideas to and they'll come back and say, I love that. That'll be in the next version. You know, yep. great guy. Yeah, is is um, I saw, I remember that he's, I saw the, the website. Sorry, Gabriel is watching and he said, uh, I, I just wrote you on the chat. Hello, Paul, <laughs> good to see you here. <laughs> <laughs> I should open the chat, though, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, he's here with no, us on, the, on Zoom. I, I, I'm I'm copying the yeah um, no I'm copying the, I'm copying the, the comments from Facebook group to the chat, so you will so be able to see it. Excellent. I remember that I saw your uh, your video for it, and also I saw the uh, on the Facebook group that you opened. I saw that uh, you released the um, template for the dashboard, <laughs> and. I'm, I think that I want to, uh, to do it to all the websites that I ever built for my clients. Uh, because once you release the website, you just hold your hands like this, like, don't touch it, don't chat it, don't, no, no, yeah. no. And then they, uh, most of them don't do it. No. Uh, but it's a good way to, uh, to release and to log the website for the client just to preserve the website that it's going to be exactly how you meant it to be. Yeah. And I think that I'm going to do it in, a, in another project of me, um, the template that you did, and it's an amazing thing to do. Thank you very much. I'm glad it's, uh, it's been useful. But like <laughs> you said, I think while well, you don't necessarily want to lock your client out of a website, WordPress by itself can be overwhelming for, for clients, especially if they've never used that kind of yep. thing. So when you try to lock down WordPress's dashboard, that can be quite time consuming. So to have something you can quickly implement to have a front end way of working with it, I just thought was a just just an interesting concept. So it's 
part of the reason why I put it together. And I say, thanks to Shabdi's um, plugin, it just made the whole process super easy. Yeah, it's good. Um, how you start? I'm, I'm, I have two questions and, and I'm going to do it into one question. That how you end up doing online tutorials and how you, how you started all this, like how you, uh, you went to uh, open a YouTube channel and uh, to do tutorials? Well, basically, if, if I go back way too far back in time for my liking, um, my first career was actually as a, as a tutor. So I was teaching adults. Uh, we basically, or I basically taught office applications, you know, Microsoft Office, those kinds of things. And, and they always bored me. So, <laughs> so I was always, I was always more of the creative side of things. So I was looking for ways in which I could take my passion. I mean, at the time for digital photography and Photoshop and those kinds of things and how I could create classes and courses for my students. Cause they say, because it was adult education, it was a lot more open to, you know, a lot more diverse range of, of individuals. So I started doing that and I spent 10 years doing that. I was teaching, you know, Photoshop, teaching uh, multimedia, teaching web design with Dreamweaver, you know, those kinds of things. Then I kind of went over to creating handouts and things as part of the course. And I just got fed up of having to keep on giving handouts to students that kept losing them. So I, I thought, well, the easiest way to get around this is to create a website. So I created a website, which was a different site years and years ago. Struck up a deal with an American company, American hosting company for advertising. And then I started creating video tutorials. Worked with a couple of magazines like Industry Standard Magazines in the UK, which is like .NET Magazine and Computer Arts and things like that. And had my tutorials on their cover CDs and things. So I spent a couple of years doing that kind of thing. Um, but then I, I left teaching and I went into actually creating websites for clients. So I set up my own business and had that for like 11, 12 years. And then probably about four years ago, four or five years ago, I just kind of got back into, I started using WordPress, which I looked at in the past and, and hated it, thought it was terrible. Um, built my own content management system. And as it was, when it came to refreshing that to version two, it wasn't cost effective and time effective for me to, to spend building another CMS. So I thought, time to go back and take a look at WordPress. Got into that started creating content again and just decided to create a YouTube channel and see what would happen with it. Um, and let's just say that that's kind of five years ago and now I'm probably doing it five days a week at the moment due to the <laughs> current situation in the world. So yeah, I mean, it was my initial passion. I've always loved teaching. I've always enjoyed that side of things. I've always tried to bring the things that I enjoy, which are not necessarily what the mainstream are creating. If you look at a lot of the content out there, a lot of the content that's being created for WordPress, a lot of it covers the same bases. You know, how to set up WooCommerce, how to set up WordPress, how to install a theme, you know, how to build a website with templates and stuff. And I kind of did that and I just got kind of bored with it. So my passion's always been dynamic content. When I used Dreamweaver, it was all dynamic stuff. So it kind of combined the two and just forced, you know, dynamic content into WordPress for me. and. Um, yeah, there we go. That's that's kind of where I am now. <laughs> and if if you if you um, in the videos and YouTube, what what is the what's the inspiration uh, like from where you get your inspiration to videos? Because I know it's not easy. Like you not wake up uh, wake up in the morning. Mm, today I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's it. It's cool. And the next morning you have more stuff and more stuff. It's like where you get your inspiration to do the videos. Uh, for the content side of things, I think it's my own interest. You know, there's always going to be, you'll see people sort of commenting on, on, you know, problems and questions and things like that. And software will come out and people will say, oh, take a look at this plugin. This will do this for you. And those kinds of things, some of those things will interest me and I'll take a look at them and, you know, either go and try them or I'll buy them to try them myself and, and take it for a spin. And... I, I can't say that I, I really struggle with a, a lack of ideas. If anything, I have too many ideas. You know, I wake up in the morning at stupid o'clock because my brain just doesn't want to switch off. So I mean, I, I'm always having ideas. Um, and it's just the community. The community is amazing. And there's other things that I'll just sort of think, well, you could use that particular plugin with that plugin. And you could do these kinds of things. So I'm going to try that. Like, you know, with the the... the the front end dashboard we were just talking about. 
I probably spent a week, maybe two, trying different ideas out. And that kind of stemmed from when I did like the business listing website, people were always asking, how can we do, how can we add content from the front end? How can we give front end access? How can we charge people to have front end access? So the, the need was there. So I thought, well, how can I build something like that? How can I take that concept and use the tools that I've got available that everyone has access to that doesn't require coding that the average user of Elementor and Elementor Pro could really see, okay, I could get my head around that and I can see, I can take that concept and then I can run with it. And that's always been the sort of the, the idea behind the tutorials. It's not to show you, just follow me. You know, that's easy to do. Anyone can sort of re record a video that just says, if you follow all these steps, you will end up with this result. I would much more rather say, if you do this, this will happen. And if you do this, this will happen. So by the end of the video, hopefully what it does is it gives you the confidence to see that the tools could be used to recreate what I've done or to just use that as a starting point that you can then jump off and you can go other places because you've seen how the tools work and you can run with it yourselves. So that's kind of, that's, that's what I've tried to do with, especially the deep dive videos is to give you the skills and the knowledge to take it in your own direction. Okay. Um, do you want to share with us what, uh, what was your most challenging moment and how you uh, overcome it? With regards to YouTube? YouTube, general, WordPress. Um, <laughs> well, that's a good one. Um, I think the most challenging, challenging thing, and most YouTubers will probably say the same thing, is keeping motivated. You know, because you can spend, like I say, I could spend a week going behind the scenes to build an idea, to try the tools, to problem solve, to come with all those things. And you spend an entire day recording, editing it. So you spent a week or two building it and then no one watches it or you get, you know, a few hundred people watch it and you kind of feel like, was it really worth the effort to do that? But I think for me, it's kind of, you've, you've got to look at, that's like scratching the itch that I've got, which is, I like, I can use those to go back when in, in six months time I'm thinking, how did I do that again? Oh, I've done a video on it so I can go back and I can learn. You know, it's, it's difficult to keep up the speed with all of the topics you covered. So it's nice to have a reference to how I've done those things and also to see how tools have developed from where they started. So for me, it's kind of, yeah, keeping the, the motivation going from time to time because YouTube could be a pretty lonely place when it's just you and a screen. Yep. It's, it's also, it's like you said that you do a video, you work a lot of hours before and you make all the uh, all the tutorials all the materials all the hands-on uh, and you feel like it's a good video and once you release it you just look like this like that's it it's like i want to affect more people yeah. and sometimes you can do a small tutorial like two three minutes on, on i don't know a small feature that you find and then this video is like yeah. boom it's like trying to, to find the balance in it. It is. I've, I've done the same thing. I've sort of been there on, on a Friday afternoon thinking I've got to get a video out tonight by 7.30. What can I do? And I literally be scouring, you know, Facebook to see if someone's come up with a new idea or they've got a problem. I think <laughs> that'll, that'll, I'm going to do that. And I'll quickly go and put a video together and I'll put that out and there'll be no production in it. It'll just be a case of just the screen recording and just talking you through it. Put that out there. And you wake up in the morning and check the stats. It's like 5,000 views. How is that fair? <laughs> How is that fair? You know, so, but you, you've got to take it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's a body of work. What, what's successful now may have a short shelf life, but something that you put out six months ago can go from being flatline like that to like that when people pick up on it and it gets posted in the right place or it answers a question that becomes a common question. You never know. YouTube is, is, there's no rhyme or reason to, to YouTube. It is basically you cast your bread out onto the water and see what happens. Okay. By the way, if you're talking about social media, uh, what made you uh, come up with the, like to open the Facebook group? Um, I wanted to get more interaction with the people that are watching the videos. I mean, YouTube is great, but the comment section is a little bit underwhelming. You know, you get notified that there's 
new comments for a very short period of time. And after that, you don't know. So you can go back to a video that may have taken off that you didn't realize it's taken off. And you've suddenly got 200 comments from six months ago because you didn't know. So I kind of thought, well, I want to be more hands-on with the people that watch the video and try to create a community of people that are like-minded. And if I'm honest, I wish I'd started that community a lot sooner because it's growing nicely. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it's, it's picking up momentum. Um, but it's just such a fantastic resource. I mean, it started off that I'd have to answer every question that would pop up in there, you know, to my best of my knowledge. But then you found that there were the same people in there that were jumping in and answering the questions before I even saw them. And now it's kind of taken on a life of its own. So for me, that's, that's incredibly satisfying is to see that that little community is growing with so many great people involved in it. And it's nice and supportive. So it's just great to see that that support network is there. And like I said, I really wish I'd, I'd done it a lot sooner because it's just become a great resource, I think, for myself and for the community that's growing inside there. Yeah, it's like, it's like you say, I think it's uh, two, two weeks ago that you uh, released the, the JSON uh, files for the templates. Yeah. It's like, I saw this and I said, thank you, finally. And for me, it's like finally a place that I can see uh, the comments, the information. It's like a, a treasure place that I can go and if I need to look for some materials or some information, uh, or to ask a question, it's a good place that YouTube, it's like you said, YouTube is, is, it's a good place. It's a nice place to watch the videos and comment, but that's it. It's like, I cannot share more stuff in it. And once you have a Facebook group, it's a good place. It doesn't matter when you open, it's good that you open it. <laughs> uh, so there is a good, uh, it's, it's a good place to, uh, I can say, store up uh, a lot of stuff over there. I'm super proud of it. Like I say, there's some amazing people on there that, that really are, you know, really sort of pushing ahead with some great resources, always answering questions. I mean, I've got to give a shout out to Els who's on there and she does a, an amazing job. I mean, she answers more questions than I ever even see. So she is, <laughs> she's an absolute star for doing what she does on there. And they say there are so many great people on there that I, I'm just super proud of it. It's one of those places that a lot of people come back and say it's so nice to be in a group that isn't full of, you know, sort of people moaning about things or people snapping at other people. It's a very respectful group. And there's one simple rule. If you come in there and you spam, you're out. There's no two ways about it. There's no, you have a warning. It's there to help people and it's not there to promote, you know, your latest plugin or, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to promote. If you want to do that, there's other places to do it. So it's a great support place. Exactly. Same, same with our community. It's that's yeah. the <laughs> the best rule to to <laughs> like take take to to for a, a good community. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Keep it nice and clean. Keep it respectful, and you'll have a good community moving forward. Yeah, and of course, for if you want to promote something, you have your own website. You can link to there and everybody can find the information over there and the group keep uh, keeping uh, like in a good place that the information that you want uh, in the group will be in the group and external information you have your own website you can share it over there exactly. so uh, it's like you said it's keeping nice and clean yeah exactly. uh, i have an interesting question for you <laughs> go on it's about clients okay um uh, I know that I can say about myself that I had the chance to do it and it's, it's, I did it. It's the first time ever that I did it. And it made me feel good because it made me, made me feel good for me and for my client. Uh, I'm talking about uh, how you fire clients. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure this is in reference to the video that I did recently um, on exactly that topic. Um, I don't think there's ever a, a way to, to fire a client or to, to, to break that relationship. I think sometimes you've got to look at what it does to you as an individual or as a business, because as I said in that video, not every client is created equal. And it doesn't matter what they're like from a personal level. I mean, people that I've had to sort of let go over the years on a personal level, absolutely lovely. But from a business point of view or 
how they drained me as an individual or the company. That's where you kind of have to look, is this working from that point of view? So there's lots of ways you can deal with that side of things. You know, I've always put in my contracts to say that, you know, there's termination guidelines for a client to terminate me for my services or for me to terminate a client services. I'm making sure that you've got a good contract that lays those things out, I think is vitally important as a, from the get go. But sometimes firing a client is the last resort. Sometimes it's better to look, is this client a good fit from the beginning? And a lot of the times I think, especially as you get more mature in working with clients, especially when you have those initial meetings, you start to see, is this gonna be the right relationship for my business? You know, Whether you're a freelancer, you're an agency, you're a business, if you have a kind of front facing, you have a face to face with people, you can gauge whether that's going to be a good fit for you. And ultimately, if it's not going to be a good fit, you, you walk away. You know, you can do it in lots of different ways. You can put your price so high they would never come back. You know, they would just, you know, just have heart failure just looking at the price. But, you know, sometimes just even pay to be honest, just to say, you know, I don't think this is a good fit for, for us as a business. I don't think we mm -hmm. can fulfill your requirements you know there's lots of different ways you can handle that situation and I, i'd say if you can handle it before it even becomes a situation that's the the ideal scenario but i think when it gets to the point of you have to let that client go it's just do you want to be honest and say it's not working you know do you want to protect your reputation by doing it in a different way and sometimes over inflating your price because you know that to do the job would be X amount of money, but the job isn't the only thing you know you're going to be supporting that client for the next 24, 36, 48 months, at which point then you'd have to factor that in, you know, as an ongoing cost, or you charge them for every time they, they have a draw upon you. It's how you can deal with that and how you want to deal with it. So firing clients should be the last resort, but you should never be afraid to do it. You know, you should never be afraid to walk away from a situation that is is toxic, doesn't work, you know, whatever the situation is, if it's not right, you should, you should cut those ties when you can in the most polite fashion as possible. You know, I saw, I saw it, it happened to me, I think last year, and I saw your video a couple of months ago. And I, I said, I, when I saw this video, I said to myself, I wish this video was <laughs> back then. And it, it was, it, it will help me a lot, but uh, it's a good thing because my next question that you also answered it. My next question was uh, how you know uh, um, that this is the right customer for you from the beginning. Like mm -hmm. from uh, you going uh, you going to a coffee with him and sit and talk to understand uh, what the needs that he need. And beside the business, how is the person itself? Because the business can be like, I finished the website, I, uh, I know the, the business of him, but the person can be good or can be bad. It depends on, on both of you. So you, you also, uh, you also answer, answer to me like how you can uh, sense if this, this customer is good for you or not. Yeah, I, I, th I think, like I said, I think that's something that you develop that sense of, Gauging a client, gauging how needy they may become. You know, you can't always blame the client. I mean, most of the time, it's not the client's fault. You know, it's if someone is coming to you for your expertise, they, they probably come to you because they don't understand how things work or they have a little bit of knowledge. And as we know, a little bit of knowledge can sometimes be quite dangerous. So it's very easy for them to maybe, you know, assume certain things that, you know, building a website is clicking a couple of buttons and suddenly you've got it. So why are you charging me that amount of money? You know, justify to me why you're doing this and you say, I need this when I don't think I do. There's lots of different things. And there's lots of little red flags that I think that will pop up. But as you get further into your career, especially when you get become more accustomed to dealing with clients, that's when you start to get a feeling, a gut feeling, whether it's going to be the right client or the wrong client. And like I say, sometimes, You've got to go with what your gut says and not start that that client you know business relationship yep uh, i have a question that it's not related to wordpress or elemental or jet or uh, in this area it's like what the most is interesting uh, um, book or article that 
I don't know that you read and, and it's following it's following you uh, along the way. Funnily enough, it's a book that um, another WordPress uh, creator, Dave Foy, put me onto very very recently, which is um, you are sorry they ask you answer. Okay. And it's from from a, a spa and pool salesman from you know back early two thousands how he took the concept of stop trying to hide away from answering questions that you may find difficult or your industry may find difficult and be open about it and actually tell people about it. And, you know, when they've got a question, even if they don't know they want to ask that question, when they come to you in whatever format, whether that's like a video, a face-to-face, -face, you know, an article you might write on your blog or a guest blog, you're answering the questions that they didn't realize they wanted to ask. You know, they're coming to you to have a website. So you tell them, well, this is the pitfall of having a website. One of the articles I wrote on my blog, my business site years ago was, do you actually need a website? You know, not every business does. So when clients come to you and this kind of round trips back to the right client, wrong client, I think, I think some of the things is that some people will sell for the sake of selling and it's not necessarily right for that particular individual or business. So I think part of what I've always thought of being in business is a big part of my job, as it were, was to educate people on what it is that's right for them. And I don't mean tell them what's right, but a lot of people will come to you and they'll think they want one thing, but the reality is they don't need that. They need something different. And I've, I've, I've put myself out of you know earning money on plenty of occasions because I thought that the client didn't need what they thought they did. And I told them what would be better for them and told them to go to a different business to supply it. Mm -hmm. So I think that that book is definitely an eye opener. And I think if you're looking for a different perspective on business, that would be a book that I would suggest taking a look at. And like I say, thank you very much to Dave Foy for, for forcing another book onto my, my buy list recently. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it's worth looking at. It's definitely worth looking at. Okay, um, let's see if we have some questions. Da, 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 da. We're going to develop an ICF, Shabtai. I've learned a lot from your videos. Galia saying, uh, you talk a lot about a jet engine. Uh, will you say it's essential for any website? And if so, why? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> um, I, I think using the right tools is the key to building a good WordPress website. Jet Engine is very powerful if you want to go above and beyond and start to create more dynamic sites, you know, pulling in your own custom post types, your own data. So if you're building something like a business listing site or a real estate website, then a tool like Jet Engine is a great platform to build that kind of thing on. But for the average website, then I think any kind of dynamic content like that is probably overkill. You know, there are plugins that you could get to do specific things. I mean, in a lot of ways, there's lots of plugins out there that you can achieve by just finding a simple little bit, little bit of code and drop it into your functions PHP file. Or as I, I demonstrated on a tutorial recently, create your own plugin. It doesn't require any real you know, knowledge to do a lot of these basic things and strip out those little tweaks, you know, like WooCommerce, for example, you can tweak a lot of WooCommerce by using the functions PHP file, or you can take those and create your own little plugin. And then you don't have to worry about updating it. You know, you don't have to worry about any of those problems because it's a simple little plugin that does one job and you know, you've created it. So Jet Engine, fantastic platform, as is tools like, you know, advanced custom fields and pods and those things. But do you need it? Not at all, unless you come across a time where you want to add those extra tools and functions, or you want to create something a little bit more advanced, a bit more powerful. Okay. Um, By the way, regarding regarding this question, one of the issues that comes a lot in our, our community is the a gap between delivering the website to the end customer that he will uh, have to maintain it and, and upload content. Uh, I think that using advanced custom fields and stuff like that can be much easier for the end user. Uh, but what is your approach in, in like, let's 
say, uh, thin websites that use only Elementor, how do you deliver it to the, to the end customer? You, you can break the, the entire website with two clicks. You can, you can. And that's one of the main reasons why recently I put together um, a video and it's based upon my specific use case where I've got tools like main WP with WP Reset with WP Vivid Backup Pro. So it means that I can maintain the backup side of things. I've got it set up with WP Vivid Backup Pro that every time you make an update, it will create backups automatically, offload those to something like Dropbox or Google Drive. If anything goes wrong, I can roll it back, making sure that you've got a good hosting company to work with. Um, the company I've been working with, I've been working with for probably like 13, 14 years from my business point of view. They've been great. If there's ever a time that I need support, they are there 24 seven and I get answers back within minutes. They've got backups, they've got daily backups, they've got weekly backups and monthly backups. So tying all those things in together, if something breaks, which invariably, you know, with something like WordPress and a couple of plugins, it can do very easily. Making sure you've got that structure in place to maintain, you know, when something goes wrong, not if, when something goes wrong, you can get things back online as quick and as painlessly as possible. And then you can take a look at fault finding to see what was the problem? You know, how do I make sure that doesn't happen again? Do I need to replace a plugin? Do I need to wait for an interim update? Those kinds of things. So I would say putting a good robust system for managing updates, managing backups, managing problems, that's more important than, you know, anything I think when it comes to WordPress. Interesting approach. <laughs> <laughs> what, oh, what is the... Don't, don't let the client anywhere near it. <laughs> what, is, what is the uh, hosting company that you use? I use a company in the UK called Kluke, which Kluke. is Kluke, okay. yeah. They, I think they've got a US-based branch as well, mm -hmm. but I've been using them um, from my business point of view for, like, say, for the last 13, 14 years. I, I also use some of the other, other companies from the WP Touch side of things because when you get a company that comes along and says, you know, we'd like to work with you, the first thing I'll do is I'll actually go and buy their product without them knowing about it. I'll test their product. And I'll run things on there and I'll see how I think it stacks up. And if I think it's worthwhile and it, it works well, then I'll look at working with that company. Otherwise, I wouldn't work with them. So I always like to go behind the scenes and test things out for myself if I'm not already using it without anybody else knowing so I can get a real feel for how it all works and test their support and things out as well. It's like to be to, to get the most honest uh, uh, approach uh, to use the let's say product, because it can be a hosting company or it can be a plugin. And when you know that nobody know who I am and I'm using it, I'm getting the 100%, uh, let's say customer service, like everybody else. And so it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to do like before you start to do uh, tutorials uh, or videos and to talk on a company, Listen, give me, uh, give, me, give me your products. I want to try it. And then you're feeling obligated to give them something about it. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, an interesting approach. I, I would always rather, um, I'd rather buy the product to start off with. I mean, Crocoblock is a good example. And I bought Crocoblock. They contacted me when they first, you know, when Zemez created the Crocoblock concept. Um, and they contacted me and asked me would I create content. And, you know, we'd have a bit of a dialogue back and forth, but nothing ever actually came of it. But when I saw Jet Engine, and I'd already bought a couple of the ZMS products, because at the time they were on Theme Forest and, and Code Canyon and those kinds of things. So I bought a couple of them to get a feel for them for myself. They were just tools that I wanted to use. And I did the same with Jet Engine and the same with Crocoblock. So for the first two years of actually using Crocoblock, you know, Jet Engine, all those kinds of things, I was paying for it. And I paid for it this time as well. But they contacted me and said, you know, well, we love what you do. So we can't let you pay for it as well. So it's like, oh, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Up until that point, for the first two, two and a half years, I was paying for that. Do you know what I mean? But I've always been, you know, for me, I would never create content on something whether someone wanted to pay me or not, just because they asked me to. If I don't think that I want, I could get behind a product, I won't do anything with it. And I was always brought up to be, if you couldn't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, which is why you don't see bad reviews I don't see any reviews, but you don't see bad content. I don't badmouth any plugin or service on the channel, and I never will. 
because it's not what I'm about. If I don't think it meets the standards, it doesn't get included in any form, you know? Um, so that, that's kind of like one of the key things for me is that I will never review a product. If I come across something that I think is a great product, like um, WP Reset, I bought that on a site called AppSumo uh, because I've been using WP Reset for a couple of months to do exactly what its name suggests. As mm -hmm. I was finished with the tutorial, I would reset WordPress so I didn't have to reinstall everything. I didn't even realize it did everything else it does. So I think they need to go back and change the name to something completely different because a lot of people think it just resets WordPress, but it does so much more. But I was so excited about what that did that I created content on it. I'd already paid for it. had nothing to do with the company. You know, since then, they've come back. We've had dialogue. But it's just because I thought the product was so good. I thought it would help so many people out there as part of my channel and my group and just people in general that I thought I've got to go and show people what this does so they don't get the same impression as me that it just resets WordPress. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Okay. Um, Joseph, do you work with clients or mainly managing uh, your YouTube channel? Um, I still work with my clients. I still got my freelance side of things. So I still work with my existing clients. Uh, I've probably got about 70 clients, I think, in total that I work with. Most of those are hands off. You know, you don't really work too often with them because once you've built the website and you have the manage management and the maintenance and hosting and side of things, that's pretty much it with that side of things. And every year, you know, you might have a couple of questions or something. So, but I don't actively look for new clients and I don't actively take on new client work at this point in time. I just don't have the time, you know, but I made the conscious thing of, I thought, do I stop working with clients? And I pack that side of things in to focus on the content creation. And I thought, well, if I do that, I've got no real world experience to keep me looking for solutions to problems, to building websites, to be kept up to date. So you can very quickly fall behind on, on things to actually fulfill clients' requirements instead of just satisfying your own, you know, sort of need to learn new things. So I don't take, I don't really take on new clients unless it's something that I think I'll be really passionate about. Uh, but I do still work with clients, but they're primarily my existing clients or clients that would be local to my 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 location because I like to have a face to face relationship with people as opposed to, you know, via the phone, via email, via you know Skype or Zoom or something. I think it's just more personal. Yeah, I'm. I'm I think that uh, when you sit in um, face to face, you feel in uh, also the vibes and the energy. And it's it's not something that you can uh, you can feel over the phone. Like you have a, you know, if you have a phone call, you don't know who is the, on the other side. Uh, you don't feel the vibes. It's like something blocking you um, uh, from the feelings. Yeah. And if you sit on the coffee, it's like face to face. You see the person, so okay. it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I think the last question that we have uh, also from Galia: uh, pods versus ACF. I'll, I'll rephrase the question. I'll, I'll make it more difficult to Paul to answer. <laughs> Thank you. How, how do you decide today which plugin to pick? ACF versus Pods versus Jet Engine? I, I'm, I'm a savvy of Jet. I, I made the, I actually made a presentation of a, for catalog website I made on January 2019. With Jet yeah, Engine, I think it was okay. on the, the most the, the very very beginning of Jet Engine. I, I love Jet Engine, but from your eyes, what? How do you pick which one of them to to start working with? Do you have any tip for that? Well, for me, Pods isn't one that's really on my radar. I've done I've done some content on it, and I know it uses a very different kind of building structure to what you have. Even though it looks the same, behind the scenes is different. I'm. I would say I'm either ACF or I'm Jet Engine. And the reason I would choose one over the other, I think if I needed to work directly inside Elemental, um, forget Gutenberg, we'll take Gutenberg out of the equation, then I would say, unless there was something specific that I needed that didn't have it, I would use Jet Engine. But if I wanted flexibility so I could pick and choose exactly what I wanted to use you know i have specific requirements that weren't necessarily answered in jet engine or jet engine may be overkill i would look at advanced, advanced custom fields because 
there's so many things you could do with ACF that I could use ACF to create the meta fields. I could use like custom post type UI to create the, you know, the custom post types and the taxonomies and so on. But then I can easily grab the code, strip out CPT UI, and just do that with my own little plugin, which doesn't need updating. And then I would look at, right, what are the specifics for the project? And then I would look at seeing which I think would match up with that the, the best, you know, which would require a ton of plugins, or could I get Jet Engine to do the same thing? So I, I don't think there's one right or wrong. I think it's always a case if you have to look at the project, you'll have to look at the specifics and see which you feel is going to answer that or provide the best solution moving forward. Um, so I don't know if that's going to answer the question, but it's kind of how I would look at it. When I look to create content, I look at which do I think is the better platform to provide the solution for this particular type of you know, deep dive at this point in time. But saying that, I've used Jet Engine and ACF in the same project. You know, I, I preferred ACF to start off with because it had more meta fields in it. Mm -hmm. And then I could just use the benefits of Jet Engine to do some of the things that you couldn't do at the time. You know, they weren't third party plugins and you'd have to hand code it. So I think it's looking at the project, looking at the requirements and knowing Jet Engine and knowing ACF and the tools that surround it well enough to be able to make an informed decision to which one you think is going to be the best solution for that particular project or that particular problem. I think it's also related to uh, not just what the project or the client needs, but also what you need, because I feel a lot of times uh, that when I use Jet Engine, it's like one-stop shop. I have everything in it and I don't need, like you said in the beginning, I don't need another like five, six, ten uh, plugins to do uh, the job that uh, Jet, Element, uh, Jet Engine and let's say Jet uh, Filters do. It's like I'm also looking when when I have a project. I'm also looking in in this area. Uh, I had a, a real estate website uh, that actually I used both of them, like ACF and Jet Engine, because there was a small thing that ACF know how to do and Jet Engine uh, didn't know how to do. So I had to cooperate between them. I hope that Jet will do uh, in the next uh, version. I don't know yeah. yet, but I hope that they will uh, incorporate more stuff that uh, the com com uh, competitors yeah, uh, do. Yeah. And it's gonna be even more fun to use it because I don't need to go uh, find solutions in other plugins that I can find in your plugin. Exactly, I mean, Jet Engine is, this, this is where I was saying right back at the beginning of the video, is that 2.3 and 2.4 have really started to answer or to fill those gaps that earlier versions of Jet Engine had, you know, glaring emissions that you just couldn't do with Jet Engine and you could do with ACF and some other plugins. Jet Engine is catching up with those and creating a nice streamlined way of work. I mean, Jet Engine itself, to work with, there are still some things I think need to be smoothed out. You know, the front end side of things, I still think is a little, little long-winded to do simple things. I think like to go back to Shabdi's plugin, He's got a very, very simple way of integrating that into ACF and, you know, your normal WordPress meta fields, you know, your things like your title, your description, your, your, your featured image and so on. That's super quick and easy. So you could rapidly build a front end dashboard much quicker than you could with Jet Engine. So if you're, you're working on a concept idea to see if something works, it can, it can take longer to do some things in a tool like Jet Engine than it can do with something like ACF and you know, ACF front end forms pro and that kind of thing. So I think when you understand the tools, you know, and you understand the limitations, that gives you the ability to find to, you know, to find which one is gonna be the best for your particular thing. And sometimes jet engine is too much. You know, there's too many things in there. So you're loading a very complex plugin in to do a very simple job. And that I think sometimes you need to know when simple is better. Yep. Okay, I see that uh, we have no further question. Uh, so I want to say uh, from my side, uh, and I believe that I'm talking behalf of the, uh, the whole company, um, uh, community, I'm sorry, community, uh, community, community. It's also a company, we, it's, it's our company. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to say that it was a pleasure uh, hosting you here. And I know that 
in a personal uh, side, I can say that you helped me a lot, even though um, we, we never met. Um, you helped me a lot like with your materials, uh, with the online tutorials, uh, with the group. Uh, so thank you a lot for this and to, uh, for, for helping the career. I, I, just, I just made the request to join the group. I hope we allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I can, now. yeah, I think that I can button? connect you. Where's the blog button? Blog, sure blog, blog, just do blog. <laughs> No, so thank you very thank much. You. It's, it's, been, it's been an absolute pleasure and, and I'm glad that I could have helped out in some small way at any point doing your, your sort of like where well, you've struggled with different things. So, you know, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to be able to help. Okay. Thank you very much and have thank a you. pleasant uh, evening. Yeah, it's evening. We're like two yeah. hours uh, <laughs> behind. No, in fun. Yeah. There's, there's a couple of hours difference. We'll go with that. Yep. The different uh, <laughs> couple hours. Yeah. Uh, well, thank so you thank you very, very much, much and have a great evening, Paul. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.